We're seeing O'Neal there on the wing. Here we're seeing this is an old one. People's the one from the top, and it's changed the game a little bit. You changed this whole game of the defense, you guys. It's about the Scottie Pippen coming to Phoenix. What are you hearing, and what do you think? Kerr, Dan Marley, Reggie Miller, Chuck Person, Glenn Rice. It ought to be a beauty. And this year, remember, the line has been moved in. The line was extended as far as 23-9 at the top of the circle last year. If you're looking at the circle, this year it's 22 feet all the way around. Let's meet our competitors. And to do that, let's join PA announcer Jeff Munn. And now, here are the competitors in tonight's AT&T Long Distance Shootout. His three-point bombs have added sting to the Charlotte Hornets' attack, making his shootout debut, Scott Burrell. For some of Wildcats fans, this marksman needs no introduction. He owns the highest three-point percentage in NBA history. From the Chicago Bulls, Steve Kerr. He's shooting 40% from the three-point line. The runner-up in last year's competition from the Philadelphia 76ers, Dana Barrows. He's made more than 700 three-pointers in his nine-year NBA career, representing the San Antonio Spurs, the rifleman, Chuck Person. The Miami Heat's all-time leader in scoring and three-point shooting, making his second appearance in the long-distance shootout, Glenn Wright. This sharp shooting swing man keeps defenses honest for one of the best teams in the NBA. From the Orlando Magic, Nick Anderson. His three pointers took Indiana to the conference finals last season. An all star and the heart and soul of the Pacers, Reggie Miller. And finally, the hometown favorite. He holds the NBA record for three-pointers made in a season from the Phoenix Suns, Dan Marley. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 1995 AT&T Long Distance Shootout contestants. All right, here are the rules. Three rounds, each scored separately. We hope you've been with us over our, our more than a decade of covering this. You'll know what the rules are pretty well. You see the red, white, and blue ball. It's right. worth two points. There are five in each rack, so a total of six points per rack. If you hit them all, a ma maximum of 30 points in one round. First round, top four advance. Second round, the top two advance, and the scores don't carry forward. Here's the money. Just pocket change that'll put these guys in an improper income tax bracket. 20,000 for first place, followed by 10, 5, and you see the rest. And we are ready to get underway. The players drew for who will be performing when in the first round yesterday. And the draws are Steve Kerr and Nick Anderson to go first. And down on my left will be Steve Kerr when we come back to the court. You see the all-time leader. And on the right will be Nick Anderson, the Magic's Orlando Magic all-time leading scorer. And so Hubie Brown will be following Steve Kerr and counting his number here. Doug will take a look at Nick Anderson, and you'll hear Charles in here whenever he's ready. Well, I think it's interesting. Steve Kerr's going to go from left to right, and Nick Anderson right to left. So already a little strategy there to get started. Main thing now is, is you don't want to drift on your shot. You want to be able to keep your eye on the rim as you reach for the ball. Big thing, follow through. Nick Anderson off to a real good start. Hubie, he's hit his first three. Uh, making his first four. Kerr's one for four. Missed the money ball, so four out of five for Nick Anderson. This is his first one. Now Kerr is a little bit warm right now. He just hit three in a row. One in a row. One out of five that time for Nick Anderson. Five for five for Kerr. Remember, he's the number one shooter in the league at 50%. Five for five for Nick Anderson in the last rack. When Steve Kerr misses, he's to the right. The right of the rim. Nick Anderson getting a little flat on his shot, getting tired. He shoots the jump shot, only one out of five in that rack. Still has plenty of time. He has almost 15 seconds here. Looks like he's fatiguing, QB. His shot has gotten very flat. Yeah, Steve Kerr has been long or long to the right. Missed his left, made uh, Nick Anderson made one of his last 10 shots. Uh, you can see definite fatigue also at this end with Steve Kerr. Looked like he was rushing a little more tonight. Unofficially, Kerr had 13 points. And Anderson 12, that's unofficially. 
in the first round. Remember, this is not head-to-head -head competition. They shoot two at a time. There they are, Kerr with 13, Anderson 12. The top four of these eight will advance, and Anderson missed nine of his last ten shots. You Charles? Know, Charles, one question. Do you feel like with the line closer that you see guys shooting more jump shots from this line than they did in the past competitions where they shot more set shots? Do you think that's going to be a factor? Well, I think the difference is, is uh, the shorter distance make it easier to jump. And uh, it's not a long shot, and you can, I don't think you'll get fatigued as fast, but those two guys definitely seem like they were rushing. Yes, they were. Our next two are going to be, as you're taking a look at Nick Anderson here, who missed nine of his last time, ten, are going to be one young man who's really lighting it up from three-point range with Philadelphia this year, Dana Barros, and he'll be shooting at the same time as Scotty Burrell. And Hubie will be following Dana, who will be down on our left, I believe. Whatever the case is, he'll be following him. Yes, Dana Barrows. And Doug with Scott Burrell, they have 60 seconds. Remember, the scores to beat are 13-12. The top four of these eight competitors will advance to round two. Now, Dana Barrows was in the final last year versus Steve Price. Scotty Burrell has, has made one of his first four. He gets the money ball, so two out of five. Barrows, three for five in the money ball. Burrell's 0 for 3, everything short. 2 for 5 with Scotty Burrell, and he got the money ball, so he got both money balls. He's hit two of his first three from the top. Barrels likes to take the ball from his right side. 4 out of 5 for Scotty Burrell, and he's made all three money balls. Right now, Barrels is hitting this. Scotty Burrell is really shooting up. He's made all four money balls, 4 out of 5 of that rack. Burrells needed that, needed that money ball. Made all five money balls. Scott Burrell, three out of five in the last rack. That was a terrific round for Scott Burrell. Burrells has been short an awful lot tonight. That last two will count for Dana Barrows, I believe. Let's get what their totals are. Remember, our first two competitors, Steve Kerr had 13 points. Nick Anderson had 12. This is not head-to-head, -head, but it's going to be the top four of these eight competitors will advance. Scotty Burrell hitting a barrage, getting 10 points from the red, white, and blue money ball with 19 points, and Barrows with nine. So right now it's Burrell, Kerr, Anderson, and Barrows in that order. We see Scott Burrell from the top. He got into a nice rhythm. His shot looked good. His timing was good. You see him get look down, get the ball out of the rack, get his eyes right back on the target. And the real key here, guys, was he made all five money balls. That gives you 10 points. That's a big jump. That gives you almost five extra shots. Now, Dana Barrow struggled. He was usually short. And, you, and you're going to see an interesting thing. He's second in the league. He's shooting 49%. He was in the finals last year, and it's the old story. Tonight was not his night. He could never get into the one word we keep saying, the rhythm. And, and you know what, Hubie, when you start out cold, sometimes you start rushing to try That's to get right. it back, and it's when you really need to slow down. Mm -hmm. It's They're interesting to watch whether they take the ball across their chest or they run around the rack and just pick it up and keep their eyes. Each guy, you know, has his own style. Next competitor, Chuck Person, will be on the left. It will follow him. Glenn Rice on the right. They'll have 60 seconds. Top two scores so far, Burrell 19 and Kerr 13. Now, Chuck basically is a standstill shooter. Glenn Rice also being very, very meticulous and methodic in his shot. Makes two of his first five. Same with Person. Drifting a little bit left here, Grand Rice. This time a little bit right. His balance does not look good. He makes one of his first four, the money ball. He does not get to one of his five in that rack. A check right now looks like, yeah, he, need, he needs to get like three in a row. That's what Glenn Rice has done. He there you four go. in a row, Hubie, and five in a row, including the money ball. So on the top of the floor, he got himself in rhythm. I think Glenn Rice is going to have to pick up his pace a little bit, though. Is a, this is the deepest point for them to shoot at. Chuck Person just has not been able to get into the, into the rhythm. Uh, Glenn Rice has got a terrific rhythm going right now. He's going to take it right down to the wire. The money ball does not go, but he had the best rhythm of all the shooters that I saw in the first two, three rounds there. Chuck Person hit that money ball just at the buzzer. It will count. We had a one officially for 14 for Rice and 12 
for we're going to go 16 for Rice and 15 for Chuck Person. And that would put them up in the standings here. And Charles Barkley, who's with us. Charles, as we take a look at the replays for the shooting here of Person and Rice, of course, uh, Chuck Person, one of your former Auburn alums. I think what you saw there was these guys are definitely standard jump shooters. And uh, it, it, this situation might be difficult for both of them because you do have to rush a shot. They're both standing jump shooting. They had to rush, and both of them felt look a little bit uncomfortable. You know, watch Chuck Person's left hand on the ball. Normally, your left hand is flat. Look at his left hand. He gets a lot of left thumb into his shot, and therefore, you have a tendency sometimes to be a little inconsistent. Now, look at the left hand of Glenn Robinson. When his hand comes off the ball, you see very little left thumb into his shot, more of a right hand shot. That's where you get the classic release and the good rotation. Well, at this level, it's the old story. It's style. It's style, and, and, and we see a lot of guys do things differently, but they have the athletic ability to excel. There you see Scott Burrell leads with 15 points as person, 14 Rice Kerr with 13, Dan Marley, Reggie Miller, our next two competitors. Bob, I really like to be able to watch Reggie Miller here when he shoots the ball, his right hand actually crosses over his left when he snaps. I've never seen a great shooter be able to do this, but watch his right hand cross his body in front of his left. Reggie's not even gonna take his warm up off here. Oh, air ball by Marley. Two out of five for Reggie, and he got the money ball. Marley's only one for five. Reggie's in a nice rhythm. Reggie gets both money balls, and he gets three out of five in that rack, and he's in a very smooth rhythm right now. Very effortless shot. Uh, everything with Marley is turkey jersey. Nothing is smooth. Reggie gets the money ball, and three out of five in that rack also. Well, Marley caught that money ball. He needed that. He, he's all over. He's long, he's to the right, he's to the left. Reggie's got plenty of time here. He's in a nice rhythm. He's made one out of three. Make that three, two out of three. Three out of four. Here's the money ball. Four, three out of five in the last rack. Uh, Marley missed all five and only made eight points. But you can see, he was like a scattered shotgun today. He's Maybe a, too much coaching with Mike Hoban for the million-dollar shot. I've always felt Marley was one of these real streaky guys. He has a Good tendency point. to get on or he can get off. And when he gets off, it's hard for him to get back in rhythm. Well, you know, Doug, he only shoots it at 39%. He's 32nd in the league. You know, he's not – your definition of him was perfect. Where at the other end, Reggie Miller is 10th in the league. He always shoots over 40%. Dan Marley only 9. He will not advance. Reggie Miller – with 17, probably will as we take a look at Reggie Miller again. Listen, Re Reggie's doing the Larry Bird, keeping his sweatshirt, uh, you know, keeping the sweatsuit top on. That's what I said. He didn't even take his jersey off yet. I mean, just. <laughs> Charles, why did you never enter this three point competition? Oh, they wouldn't let me. That's the truth. Uh, 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 you know what? That's the reason y'all got me over here because I think it's a disgrace that I'm not in this contest. I mean, I'm shooting 30 percent. You could hit these. <laughs> you remember what happened when Michael won to get into the three-point shooting too? Oh, uh, I don't mind. I mean, uh, you know, I might get one of my hot streaks. I'm a streak shooter. The operative word there is might, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> And you see Dan Marley had some problems there. So here's who's going to advance. Burrell, Miller, Rice, and Person will advance. Kerr, Anderson, Barros, and local hometown favorite Dan Marley do not. We'll be back with round two right after this. Free to get in on this with us. Okay. Because there's just one shooter at a time. Back to the semifinals of the AT&T Long Distance Shootout. Our four who advanced from the group of eight are Glenn Rice, Chuck Person, Reggie Miller, Scott Burrell, and they will shoot in that order from left to right. Rice, Person, Miller, and Burrell. The interesting thing to me is Scott Burrell only took six three-pointers all last year. This year, he has taken 149. Now, the first one will be Glenn Rice, and here's where Glenn got his big points. Look at the shorter 22 right at the top of the arc. Well, everyone likes that spot. 
You know, uh, if you, if you were going to shoot against Glenn Rice right now, you would take him to the top of the circle, No Bob. question about it. It's my favorite spot. <laughs> well, you know, interesting, I think, also, too, is, you know, when you double-team the post, many instances, that first pass out is that top of the uh, circle shot. That's where guys practice a lot. One year ago, the high for the first round was Dale Ellis at 20, Scott Burrell at 19. The guy who won it, Mark Price, he only had 15 in that first round, but came in with 21 and 24. So look out for Glenn Rice. Remember, 22 feet all the way around this year. I find it interesting that he lifts his head and he re and, and his shoulders go back on the release. Yeah, normally when you do that, the shot will fall short. That's Jimmy. right. Got the money ball. So he goes to the other side and he gets it over his right so he doesn't cross his body. Main thing is is to take time and lock in with your eyes. Look at the top of the key again. Boy, does there he love go. this. He got him all this time. Man, oh man, does he make hay up there? I think the thing you're seeing is Glenn Rice does not like to shoot going to his right. That's why he goes to that side of the rack. He prefers to go left when he makes the shot. He's got a good rhythm right now, and I thought he had a good rhythm in the first round also. He's not in a hurry. He's almost got the clock in his head that he's got plenty of time. Got a good bounce, and he hit the money ball. Well, Story, you have to have that good spin, yes, and he sir. had it. That's that shooter's touch, Hubie. That's right. Beautiful. Glenn Rice, Miami's all-time scoring and three-point leader, gets 19, and he has a very good start, Charles. Now, were you just giving a scouting report on him during the course of the game? Oh, he, he doesn't go right to shoot. He goes left. He's going to make that. He got a great jump shot. He's a very streaky shooter, but he wants to go left. You know, a lot of people would say, Charles, now why would a right-handed shooter like to go left to shoot and not go right? I always felt I shot better going left because your, your hand, your shooting hand was right at the basket rather than have to shoot against your body. And a lot of people don't understand for a right hand shooter, many instances it's easier to go left. It is. It's, it's definitely a lot easier. Especially, uh, but you played? Long time ago. <laughs> That's when they had laces on the ball, Charles. You were the number one pick in the draft, weren't you? <laughs> 1973. Oh, wait a second. Charles, Charles you made me blush. Right, give, give, you, right, you come made on, me now blush, reach in your Charles. pocket right now. Reach in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> As you see, Glenn Rice with 19 points. He hit four money balls, and at one point, Glenn Rice hit seven in a row. If you think that's good, Craig Hodges hit 19 in a row. That was one, one of the most spectacular things I'd ever seen in a playoff. That's right. I mean, in the, in the uh, competition. Chuck Person is up next, and you see he, too, did very well from up at the top and over in the corner when he finished. He's going to start where he only hit two balls in the first round. The thing to watch about Chuck, there is not a big elevation. It's basically a little hop. Just, he just elevates just a, a slight bit off the floor. He has a tendency, if he misses, his shot gets flat. He has to make sure he gets it up to the basket and doesn't just get front rim. Looks pretty flat here. He missed three there, and all from all of them hit front rim. I'll Look at his left I'm... hand. Look at his left hand and his left thumb. He sort of squirts his shot at the basket. Doug, it is effortless. Yes, it is. You know, it, it just like glides out of his hand. He's got great rotation on his shot. Nice rhythm. He's nice, smooth, nice follow through. His balance is good. Well, they like it up the top. Those guys all they six. All do. Didn't Hot Rod Hundley have a sit looking down the barrel? And that what he always says? There you go. Looking down the barrel. The rifleman, Chuck Person from Auburn, now playing for the San Antonio Spurs. Got the money ball. Tell you, his three-point shooting could be a major factor for the San Antonio Spurs in the playoffs. Play Dennis Rodman this is a big one in the rebound. It's only 16 for Chuck Person. Our first shooter, Glenn Rice, had 19. Person now with 16. And the top two will advance. You see Scotty Pippen right in the back there of uh, Chuck Person, along with some of the other All-Stars like Anthony Hardaway. Let's have a look at that hop you're talking about. Are you going to see it? You know, there's a very little elevation. It's basically a little bit of a hop. He likes to grab the ball so he does not bring it across his chest. The other factor in this shootout is that when you get to the last station, you cannot drift on your shot. And that's what you got to try to do. Concentrate and elevate and then just shoot through with the good follow throw. And normally as a right hand shooter, your left foot is your pivot foot. And what you want to do is you want to step in and your right foot gets slightly ahead of your left and you get your elevation and you get your power. 
Come on now, let, let, let's take take care of the Auburn guy right now, Charles. Well, he's the second best player to ever come out of Auburn. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's what I heard. And he's, now he's the best player in his family, though. Uh, oh. For I right now. Oh. You know, he lost the baby Ruth shootout to his little brother this morning. Well, we had that rig so a guy from Phoenix can win it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Glenn Rice with 19. And Chuck Person with 16. And next up is the man who never met a shot he didn't like, Reggie Miller. And his shot shot pretty good balance, except for that left wing over there. He had 17 points in the first round. Now this, this says a lot about guys where they like to shoot on the floor. Let's see if this trend continues, or maybe on the other side he picks it up this time. an effortless shot to QB. I'm not oh. so sure that he doesn't have the best range of anybody in this competition. I just wish he would slow down a little bit. Yes, a little, little quick. Yes. That's a little bit better. See, that's where he gets his shot a lot, at that area on both sides of the floor. This both of the bunny balls. If he doesn't beat 16, he won't advance. a couple money balls that would really sit there him over him. And there's that flick of the hand. Needs 16 to stay in the running. Well, you can see right behind him, he's got excellent rotation. That was beautiful. He loves those two angle areas. There's 15. There's 16. There's 17. advance so he was upset there uh, he really came on strong in his last two stations but again not panicking he's been in the competition before and he slowed himself down Hubie as you said before look at his right hand now as it crosses over his left Hubie have you ever seen anybody shoot the no. ball like that with no, that kind of accuracy that's right. you would think that the ball would spin spin out on him. Or, or it would also go right on you but here's that's this great right. finish But you could see he was hurrying a tad too much in station one and two. But did not, did not panic, and his experience, I think, helped him get himself on track. He had that shot clock in his head. And he hit 12 of his last 14. So you see, Glenn Rice had 19, as did Reggie Miller. And so now, we take a look at Scott Burrell, and I told you before, he took six shots two years ago all year from beyond the three-point arc. This year, he's shooting 64 of 149 for 43 percent, and he has really stepped up to this new shorter 22-foot line. Well, he's 14th in the league. Scott Burrell off to a tough start. Shot's a little flat right now. You got to get it up. Yeah. He must slow down here right now. All right, now he's in a nice rhythm. So he's a jump shooter. He really used a lot of legs. Yes, It'll be interesting to see if he gets tired on the finish right now, if he's able to finish strong. Nine for Burrell. He needs 19 to advance. Boy, he's really shooting the ball well. Yes, he is. That's 15. This is going to be close. Better take his time. That one didn't get it. 17. Now the top two shooters advance, and they are Rice and Reggie Miller. Oh, that last one was a heartbreaker. That one was in and spun out. Charles, give us your thoughts on this here. Well, that was, hey, he knew he needed to make that last shot, I think, and uh, that was a great effort, though. Tell you how close the competition is, though. His goes and Reggie's does it, and he advances, and Reggie stays home. So that's how close it was. So the shootout for the 1995 AT&T Championship. Glenn Rice and Reggie Miller when we come back.
it look like his hands have to collect. It does. That let you know ain't no always ain't the right way to do it. It's the best way. That's right. yeah, I take his shooting ability any day over yours. <laughs> I take his shooting ability over yours any day. When you gonna coach again? I have to put up with guys like you. You get me killed. Hey, I'll be your number one assistant. <laughs> I know that, but I want you playing. I don't want you sitting beside me. Oh, no, no, no. The older I get, the better I was. <laughs> Tails never fails. Tails never fails. It's heads. You've won. First or second. Why don't you and Coach Brown come back and you go together first. and make me your third you assistant? You want to talk, go first. I'll be your third assistant. I'll be right behind him. We don't want to be the head coach. No, we want to be your assistant. We want to see you die in slow death. <laughs> I need bigger guys to pull me off the players. Rice the won the ball. toss and is going coaches. first. I'm going to have Rick Mahon is that right? Assistant. Rice won the toss and will shoot first. All right. I got Rice it. Will shoot at the East Gonna win the dunk. I tell you, uh, I, uh, I think JR got a chance to repeat. He got some. The money ball is everything. We're ready now with Rice is going to shoot first at the coin toss. Glenn Rice won the toss over Reggie Miller. It's Miller heads. called it. Tails, it was head. Rice first won toss and will shoot. First, Charles, any thoughts on shooting first, first or second in this last round? Well, it depends on how you do well you do. If you get off, essentially, if you get off to a good start, you, the guy's going to feel a little pressure if he's shooting second. 60 seconds, Glenn Rice. So far tonight, not one player has shot made 20 points. With a shorter line. Rhythm. Yeah, he does. He's bringing down range. A nice, nice high arching shot. He hadn't hit many. <laughs> Better range some more. Now that top has been good. That the top of the circle is where he is really caught up in his competition. Let's see if he can do it once again. Needs this one. My goodness, four out of five and didn't even hit the rim on four of them. Remember, previous scores don't come into play here. It's simply head-to-head -head competition between Glenn Rice and Reggie Miller. If he posts 18, that's going to be tough to beat. Uh, he gets 17. The all-time record is 25. With 19 in a row, as you'd said before. Craig Hodges has the all-time record for most points made. Of course, this year there will be a new three-point champion because Mark Price, with his injury, couldn't come in to enter here. So well, let's take a look at Glenn Rice again. Well, this is his area where he's buried them all night long. It's the comfort zone. Classic jump shot. Look at the nice follow-through and. QB, just to expound on your point, he made 13 out of 15 from the top in the three rounds. Look at the nice follow through, the nice rotation. You know, he does he does move his head back a little bit, and I'm yes, surprised that with his head moving that he has that kind of success. But you know what? Again, it's what you get used to in Tampa. I mean, the thousands upon thousands of shots that this man has shot in Look, his career. This year, he's eighth in the league at 46%, so you know he drills them. Here we go. Reggie Miller has to beat 17 to be the 1995 AT&T Long Distance Shootout Champion. Let's see if Reggie can give us one of those Game Six before Game Five performances in New York that we saw. Good start. Reggie doesn't look like he's on balance in that corner. He looks like the last shot he's taking, he's moving before he gets it off. Definitely drifting, Doug.
big shot, money ball. Let's see what he does from the top here now once again. Boy, they love looking down that top. No. Oh. He's moving too quickly on his money ball to get to the next rack. Yeah. Got to beat 17. Still in there, though. He needs his money ball this rack. He didn't get it. He's done. He can't win it now. He can tie with all six. He's out of there. Reggie Miller is not able to catch Chuck Person. And we have a new AT&T Long Distance Champion. Glenn Rice is our new long distance shootout champion. He's with 17 points. Glenn Rice. Miller officially got 14 on his last spin around the racks, and Glenn Rice is our new champion. What now? We'll go together. I done went just to drink free beer. <laughs> Concluded here from America West Arena. Miami's all-time scoring and three-point leader wins it. Glenn Rice, he beat Reggie Miller in the championship round. Scotty Burrell was third. Chuck Percy.